Hey guys, I wanted to do a video that is on the process of how to easily find the basis if we're given the span of a set of vectors. So let's say that we're given the set of vectors A and we define some sort of vector space S to be the span of those vectors in A. So if we were asked to find the basis of S, it's actually a, a pretty easy process and it holds true for any set of vectors where this is the case. And I just want to explain like why it makes sense and how we can like why we can apply it to like harder problems and using like an easier example to understand it. So let's say that we're trying to find the basis of S. Let's remind ourselves what what does the basis of S actually mean? The basis of S, we know that a basis is going to be a linearly independent set of vectors. So linearly independent set of vectors. And that set of vectors, we know that it has to span all of the vector space that we're, it's the basis of. So it will span all of S, all of the vector space S, right? So. Let's just think here. I chose an easy example so we can like pretty easily visualize it. And so what I want to do, let's think if S is the span of A, let's just think uh, geometrically, like what is the span of A? So I've got, I'm just picking random, random axes that these vectors will correspond to. Let's say I've got the one zero zero right here. Let me zoom in. That's my first vector, and then I've got my second one. Let's say that is 0, 1, 0. And that last vector is 1, 1, 0. So with the way I've drawn these, it should look something like that. Not the best drawing, but it'll do. So if, if we were to take the set of all of the linear combinations, which is the span, then let's think what what would that look like? I'll give you a minute. So clearly, since one one zero is a combination of one zero zero and zero one zero, then the linear combination of all three of those vectors, it's going to be the set of all of them. There, I'm just drawing all a bunch of different possibilities right now. We're all going to be on that that uh, plane that the red and the green vectors span, right? Because that blue one is not really adding any new dimension to our span. And if if this process doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to you. I've got a more, much more detailed video on my channel about uh, span and linear, linear independence, so I definitely recommend checking that out if this does not make a whole lot of sense. But So we can quite easily see that the span would look, it, the, all of my, my vectors of those three, would, so the span of A would look something like this, right? It spans a plane in R3. Okay, great. So we can quite quite clearly see that since that blue vector is a linear combination of the, the red and the green one, it's not adding anything to our span. So the, the basis the basis of S, and we can see from inspection of this case, right? One zero zero and 0, 1, 0. Just those two vectors, oh, sorry. Just those two vectors there, if I took the span of those, then that would be equal to the span of A, right? And you can also clearly see that 1, 0, 0 and 0, 1, 0 are linear in, linearly independent. So by inspection, we can see this is the case. But what I want to do here is 
suppose that we could not just easily tell like through by inspection what the basis of s is so if we were trying to find a linear whether or not a is linearly independent we would consider the equation that looks something like this let me we have c1 times 100 zero, zero, plus c2 times 0 1 0 plus c3 times 1 1 0 and then this would be equal to we set that equal to the zero vector because we know that when c1 c2 and c3 when they are all equal to zero and that's the only solution we know that that's a linearly independent set of vectors so if we were to put those three separate equations for like c from the first uh, the first coordinate of each of the vectors equals 0 then we could create the matrix 1 0 1 0 1 1 0 0 0 and then if you want you can include that augmented part but we can just say that this is a homogeneous system and simplify our matrix a little bit and write it like this and since this is a very very simple example we actually already have a matrix that's in reduced row echelon form so we can interpret the answers right away so once you get your matrix in reduced row echelon form we can tell we have a leading entry in the first column a leading entry in the second column but this third column right here that is not a leading entry right so that indicates to us right here that the c3 column that means that c3 is a free variable or a parameter so remember what that means it means that I can set c3 to be equal to a parameter and I can change that parameter to whatever I want and it's still going to make a solution to that system so what that's telling us is that c3 can be anything so if I if if I had c3 to be equal to 5 then that would make a solution that is showing me that that's not a linearly independent set of vectors so if I were to remove that third vector 1 1 0 and I would be left with this 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 matrix right here right and let me just draw the augmented part so it's a little bit more obvious right this is we're considering the equation right right here c1 times 1 0 0 plus c2 times 0 1 0 equals 0 0 0 right and you can clearly see from the reduced rational form of this matrix that c1 and c2 when those are equal to 0 that's then that's going to be the only solution meaning that those two vectors would be a linearly independent set so what's that what's that what that is telling us is that the first and the second vectors are going to have the same span of the first matrix that we produced right since c3 was a free variable right we can change that and that's going to make it a linearly dependent set so we remove it and now we have a reduced linearly independent set of vectors so we can see that the from reducing our matrix like that we've got the basis of s is equal to and then we just take that reduced set of vectors that we have right one zero zero and zero one zero right and that's exactly what we what we saw from visualizing it so the general process we're just gonna set up a, a matrix with uh, a homogeneous system right as the each column of that matrix will be our vectors in the set and then 
we'll row reduce it and we'll see that any any column that has a free variable will remove that vector and then the resultant vectors in the set after I remove the the free variables then those will be the linearly independent set so let's let's apply that to a little bit of a trickier example let's say I'm given this and this is way harder to visualize you're not going to be able to solve that from inspection right I have no idea which ones are linearly independent and which ones are uh, like a combination of a linear combination of the others there's no way I'm going to do that by inspection so let's say that t is equal to the span of b I'm just choosing random things here and, and let's say that we're trying to find the basis of t so what we just learned is that if we have c1 and then I'm just going to write these as v we'll set we'll set up an equation a matrix for considering this equation right and that will leave me with well that'll be 4 3, 2, 1 in the first column, 1, 2, 4, 1, 5, 4, 2, 0, 1, 0, 3, 1, 7, 3, 1, 4. And it's a homogeneous system, right? All, all of those equations equal 0 on that augmented part, which will not affect how we row reduce. So if we were to row reduce this, which I'm not going to go through the trouble of doing that because it's not the not the point of this video. If we were to row reduce this, we would get one zero zero, and I, I've done this beforehand. Zero one zero one zero zero zero, and then. 5, negative 1.2, negative 2.4, 0 0.2, right? So we can see from here, remember, this is C1, C2, oops, C3, C4, C5. You can see that this fifth column here, I don't have a new leading entry, which means that C5 is a parameter. So C5, whenever that C5 is not equal to zero, it's making uh, a whole bunch of other solutions, right? Which C1, when they're not all equal to zero, which makes that fifth vector, it's making that, this set a linearly dependent set. So we'll remove it from the set of vectors, which means that we can immediately say that the basis of T is equal to all of the columns with the leading entry. So in this case, it would be, and I'm, I'm not going to write all of this out, copy and paste this. So in this case, the basis of T, you can immediately say, is this. And that's it. You can apply it to any problem, just like that.